This is Easton Jackson and in today's video we're going to look at some specific examples of how you can assign or reassign different labs, diagnostic imaging, and procedures to different diagnoses. I'm also going to illustrate a particular example where removing a diagnosis can make a lab or diagnostic or procedure order unassociated and can actually make it so you're unable to order any other labs, DIs, or procedures until you clear this up and we'll discuss the way to avoid this and the workaround in case you run into this. First of all, this is a fake patient and notice that I am the owner of the patient uh, note today and in this example we're going to have a patient who is here for a variety of complaints. One of these examples is the patient showed up complaining of some urinary discomfort. In this example my medical assistant or nurse would often order a urinalysis even before I have seen the patients so that they can have the result in the chart when I'm evaluating them. eClinical needs to have the lab ordered associated with the diagnosis so in this case we have given the diagnosis of R30.0 which is painful or difficult urination. It might be a urinary tract infection or kidney infection but we don't know that yet and that's why we have associated it with this symptom. As you can see down here, here is the lab. It's ordered and normally they would have the results in there as well but I haven't added them for this video. Now let's suppose that I've completed my evaluation of the patient and I have determined that they have a urinary tract infection. I'm going to add the diagnosis of UTI. Now it's added here. Now notice I'm going to remove difficult or painful urination because I don't want the symptom on there. Instead, I know why they're having the symptom and here is the diagnosis, UTI. So I remove difficult and painful urination, confirm it, and then when I close the note, it updates with UTI. This is all fine and good except that you can see that now the urinalysis that has been ordered is now associated under other. It's not uh, connected to any uh, specific diagnosis, particularly not associated to the UTI, which is ultimately the reason I did it. Now you might not think that's a big deal because you can still bill it and you can associate it correctly in the billing. However, one problem occurs. Let us suppose that my medical assistant has gone through and has entered the values here and then they have marked it reviewed. They mark it reviewed and hit OK. This creates the problem. Let's suppose that I now want to go ahead and I'm going to order some labs, say for this patient's pneumonia. So, like usual, I'm going to go, I'm on pneumonia tab, and I click browse, and I want to order a complete blood count, a CBC. Now, I'm going to order the CBC. Here's the one that I want and I've ordered it. Notice it's associated with pneumonia. Everything is good. Don't worry, we'll come back to the lipid later. Here's that urine sample. Notice there's no diagnosis associated with it. And I might think, well, that's fine. I've taken care of it. I'm not going to worry about it. When I hit OK, it will not let me out. It says you have to associate it with an ICD code. So I hit OK. Normally the process to associate a code with a procedure or lab study is you would click the three period button here called an ellipsis. When I click here, in this case on the CBC, I can see the different diagnoses and I can actually choose and associate it to one or the other or more than one if I want. In this case I'm going to leave it on pneumonia because that's where I wanted it. However, notice that the ordering window is grayed out here. When I click on this, nothing happens. When I hover over it, I can't edit the details because this one has been marked reviewed. At this point, I am basically hung up. I can't order anything else. I can try to delete it. It can't be deleted because it's been marked reviewed. Now I can click the X so I can at least get out of the window, but notice the CBC I ordered is not there, and I am stuck. At this point, the only way to really get out of this is go to the urinalysis lab window in this case. You can see that it's reviewed. If you are the owner of the note, meaning the physician who's listed as the note owner, then you can go to options and there's an unreview uh, option here. Note that this might be disabled by your system administrator depending on the settings that you're working with. Uh, I'm logged on as an administrator right now so I can do this, but it's quite possible you may not be able to and you'll have to ask 
your administrator to unlock this. When I unreview the note, I get a little warning from eClinical Works. I click yes, and now it's gone to open status. I can now go back in and let's go order my CVC again. I'm on pneumonia. I'm going to order my CVC. And once again, you can see that the urinalysis is not associated. I click OK and it again reminds me, hey, it's not associated with anything. You need to do that before you go ahead. Now the ellipsis button is not grayed out. I can click it and look, I can add it onto UTI and it's fixed. For this reason, at our clinic, we recommend that the nurse or the medical assistant performing these point of care uh, clinic labs such as urinalysis, rapid strep test, monospot test, and so forth, not mark them as reviewed. I understand that it may be more efficient for them to mark it reviewed, but often it will not be associated with any uh, other diagnosis if the physician removes that original diagnosis like I did. And in this example that I've just demonstrated, it can actually hang you up and make you unable to order anything else until you unreview it. If you don't have permissions to unreview it, then you're really stuck, and this is going to cause a workflow problem. So for this reason, at Granger Medical Clinic, we are instructing our medical assistants to not mark these point-of-care labs, meaning those labs performed right there in the clinic space when the patient is there, that they should not mark them reviewed, they should leave them open. Now I'm going to demonstrate one related process as well. I want you to notice that in this patient, along with the urinary infection, I've also diagnosed pneumonia, and they're here for an annual exam. It's quite the visit. Notice that I've misordered some of this. Under pneumonia, I ordered a lipid profile, which doesn't really make sense to order with a pneumonia, and it's possible it may get denied and either my clinic ends up eating the bill or the patient ends up getting billed for it, neither of which is optimal. Also notice I've ordered the chest x-ray under annual examination and I've ordered a thoracentesis under annual examination, both of which are probably not indicated for an annual exam and are probably going to get denied. I need to go reassociate these correctly. To do so, we're going to go back into some windows that we've seen a few times now. At this point, while I'm reassociating, it doesn't really matter which tab I'm selected on. And I'm going to go to Browse. Notice, here's the lipid profile. It's associated with pneumonia. That's not okay. I want that with the annual exam. I'm going to click the ellipsis. And you can see for lipid profile, it's associated with pneumonia. I'm going to simply unclick pneumonia, click annual exam. I can click Save or I can click Next. Notice if I click Next, it will take me now to the CBC. In this case, the pneumonia is the appropriate um, assessment to choose for a CBC. So I'm going to click Save. Notice it's now updated. The Z00 code for annual exam is now associated with the lipid profile. Let's go do something similar now for diagnostic imaging, which I've also misassigned. Notice that we have the chest x-ray. When I hover over it, it's associated with the annual exam. Well, I didn't do it for that reason. I did it because they have pneumonia. So I'm going to click on the ellipsis. Same process. I'm going to unclick the one I don't want. I'm going to reassign it to the diagnosis I want. And you can assign it to multiple diagnoses if you want. I don't know if there's a compelling reason to do that, but the option is there. I'm going to click OK, and now it's correctly assigned. Let's finally go to Procedures. This is a question that comes up because we have radiologists who have an interface to our eClinical Works installation so they can read our reports. Normally I would click yes, I'm going to click no because this is a fake patient. And now we're on to procedures. Now, here I've ordered a thoracentesis and again I've inappropriately ordered it associated with the annual exam when I really wanted to do, uh, order it because they have pneumonia, perhaps they have a pleural effusion or an empyema. So the same process, I'm going to simply click the ellipsis, uncheck the inappropriate diagnosis, check the correct one, save it, and I'm done. You can do this with anything in labs, diagnostic imaging, and procedures as long as they are not marked reviewed. If they're marked reviewed, you can't change what they're assigned to unless you unreview it, and that's if you have the permissions to do so.
one question I've received is, can I do the same thing with a medication? For example, if I uh, prescribed an antibiotic but inadvertently did it under annual exam, it's going to be associated with annual exam. Unfortunately, I'm not aware of a way to reassign medications to different diagnoses like we did on labs, DI, and procedures. However, if someone who's watching this knows how to do it, I would love to hear it. And if you added it in the comment stream, that would be great. I hope that this is helpful, that this gives you an idea of how to reassign labs, diagnostic imaging, and procedures, and also some of the pitfalls in doing it incorrectly. Thank you.